Hi guys and welcome to this webinar where I want to give you some final pointers on the ACCA SBL pre-scene material. My name is Sean Purcell, I am an ACCA SBL expert tutor and I'm running tonight's webinar alongside PQ Magazine so that you can fully understand the SBL pre-scene exam material. I'm conscious that some of you are not all able to go on courses and in this webinar I want to share with you experiences my students have had and learnings they've had from the pre-scene material and I also want to make sure that the contents of the pre-scene material are fully understood and we are able to contextualise any questions that we might get in the real exam. So listen carefully, maybe consider making some notes on what I'm saying and um, yeah, take this information on board and hopefully this exam will be history for you. So let's um, have a little listen to what's being said and um, I hope you find it useful. The session is all about you. I'm here to give you my knowledge and experience of SBL so please ask questions if you have any that's what it's all about so i will just allow a few people coming in here what the nature of the session this evening is going to be where i share with you some information about the pre-scene and if you have any questions on it pop them in the chat box or come off mic hopefully everything i'm going to say is um going to preempt some of your questions. Sorry, people still coming in. Uh, but, but feel free to ask any questions you like. I'm going to with my I, I run courses, I'll tell you a little bit about me in a moment. But I run courses with students, uh, they do mock exams on this ACCA CB platform. And obviously, they've done quite a few of them. They have asked me lots of questions, they've learned lots of lessons. And I want to share some of those learnings with you. So you can be the best person you possibly can in your exam okay so i don't want to waste too much of your time i think we are uh, you know we're, we're, we're ready to kick off uh, but before we do does anyone have any questions just to preempt anything before i kick off still people coming in say hello to me andrea hello cameron hello can you see me can you hear me yeah, I'm not sure I know yeah, I how to do you, yeah. Perfect, Andrea. Uh, you'll have to teach me how to do claps on, I don't think I've ever done a clap on a Zoom call, but fantastic. Charambalos, good evening. You're very welcome. Sheila, Timia, Daljeet, William, Eskinde, Tom, Sheneza. Great. So let me share with you my screen and I'm going to share with you this screen here and I'm going to talk about this in presenter view and so can you just let me know maybe come off mic can you see what can you see on a screen in front of you okay perfect some of you are kind enough to put some messages in the chat box so thank you very much so this is about people doing the exam next week let me help you with everything I can. Who am I if you know nothing about me? I've been talking to ACCA students about ACCA case study exams for many moons. For that, I've won various awards. I work with the ACCA as their expert tutor, training tutors how to teach SBL on behalf of the ACCA and also helping the ACCA improve pass rates in countries where maybe the scores for case study exams are not very good. Also, I run a course which is platinum approved, which is the highest approval the ACCA can give a course. So hopefully that gives you some confidence. Please take on board what I say. Please try and ignore all the false prophets on Facebook who are full of themselves at the moment, because really they are just going to take time away from where you should be focusing your efforts. 
So in terms of what I want to say, firstly, I want to remind you what are the foundation stones of why students are successful in all ACCA exams. Number one is they have something in their heart that motivates them to pass these exams. They structure their lives. They have a timetable of living and they follow an ACCA approved approach. So if you can't afford to go on courses, that's absolutely fine. There's the ACCA Study Hub, which has fantastic resources. Please concentrate your times and efforts. If you want free stuff in that area, then all these people on Facebook, I travel all around the world for the ACCA. I don't know who these people are, but I know you have a short window of study and you think, oh, they're on Facebook. They must know what they're talking about. Please, please take my advice. So, what am I here to talk about? I'm here to talk about the pre-seen material. Before I get stuck in, I want to talk to you about what the pre-seen material isn't. Yep, and what not to do. I don't want you to overanalyze it. The point of it is to understand terminology, to understand what's going on in there, the, so you can contextualize any exhibits that are given on the exam day, and it is definitely not a question spotting exercise. Okay, so that's what the pre scene is. Uh, do we know, just to check, maybe you can let me know in the chat box, who is the pre scene material about? Almost there, uh, Sharam Lapas. I'll give you that. CoreJet, Andrea says EasyJet. No, it's not about EasyJet. Be careful. EasyJet is an inspiration for it, but you have to be careful mixing reality with a fictitious case. Yep, they are very useful to help us visualize what's going on, but please don't grow easy jet. It won't go down well. So it is about core jets. Okay. Who are core jets? What do we need to know about them? Well, they're a low cost provider airline. So in your theoretical study world, they operate a strategy, which is that of a cost leader. Okay. So we need to understand what a cost leader is so we can contextualize things. So in terms of so in terms of cost leadership and what is it all about? Sorry, uh, what why would you become a cost leader? What would you get from being a cost leader? Well, a cost leader is a lowest cost producer and often as a result, they can win a price war. Yep, yeah? they're also very attractive to price conscious people. What is the drawback of being a cost leader, though? Well, if you, you know, cost leaders would be people like Aldi or not just airlines. What is the drawback of being that? Well, one of the drawbacks of being that is because you are a low price producer, because you're a low price producer. Anyone maybe want to say in the chat box what a drawback might be of being selling at a low price? Not necessarily lower margin, Shamaz, because if your cost base is much lower than everyone else, the margin you have is still potentially better, but it normally is quite low margins, I agree, but not necessarily, not necessarily if you have good operational efficiency. Uh, less revenue per unit, that's kind of similar to lower margins, to be honest. What I would say is, uh, would, what would be the, what would you think uh, about uh, Aldi champagne? I'm coming around to your party, I say, bring a bottle of champagne and I bring brown, bring around some Aldi champagne and all the wine analysts say Aldi champagne is actually the best champagne. But what might people think? What might people think if I bring around Aldi champagne? Thank you, Sheila. Low perceived value potentially, but it's poor quality. It's cheap because it's not as good. So appreciate that there is a perception of being a low quality uh, product. So we have to contextualize that in the world of cost leadership. We're a low cost airline. We cannot compromise on quality, which in the world of airlines is health and safety. So just watch out for that. If questions are fishing around that zone, your business is dead if you would have a crash or were to be found out for low quality. What are the main costs in a business like core jets, the aircraft, the fuel, the staff, the airports. So we have to think about how those key drivers of cost can be made even cheaper. So how do we keep them down? Well, aircraft, 
Well, again, I might think about EasyJet here. I might think about Ryanair or Southwest Airlines to inspire me because what they do is they only have one aircraft. So Ryanair only has one type of aircraft. And if the provider of that aircraft, for example, Boeing, does not give a good deal, they might say, bye bye, Boeing. We're going to go and buy some aircraft off Airbus. And they have done that. Yeah. So that is a potential problem or a benefit of how you keep the aircraft costs down. What else were we talking about? We were talking about uh, fuel. Well, it, it's a commodity product. You can spot buy fuel forward. So to an, uh, be able to predict pricing and costs, you'd have to hedge your fuel costs. Staff, if you've ever been on a low cost airline, uh, I was on a Ryanair not very long ago, they were selling me raffle tickets or something and encouraging me all the time to buy food, to buy a drink. So staff, they get okay paid, but they probably get a big bonus if they sell a lot of raffle tickets. They probably also get a big bonus if they pull up passengers who have oversized baggage and charge them a big fine. So they'll probably get quite good commission on that kind of behavior. And that's probably why it does. Airports negotiate hard. If you're not going to give me a deal, I'm leaving and going to another airport. So in real life, people like Ryanair, they actually uh, look at an airport uh, for its costs and they actually work out how much they contribute to the local economy. So uh, Ryanair work out where well, we're going to get taxis, we're going to have hotels. We reckon every passenger we land on your airport will contribute maybe 60 euros to the local economy. So for us to land at your airport, a local community, I want 40 euros per passenger from you. Even then there is a net contribution of 20 euros. That's what they do. If they don't pay it, see ya, we're off to another airport. So yeah, they play hardball. Core Jets future strategy, what could it be? Could be all kinds of things and I'm not going to speculate, but I'm just going to say, well, what if they wanted to give a full class, full service or first class? What if they wanted to buy another airline? How would I deal with a question of that nature? Yeah, what I would do when faced with a question of that nature, I would pull out of the hat my classic little framework to evaluate a strategy that's on the table. And that would be, is it suitable? Is it feasible? Is it acceptable? To be full service and to be first class, I would suggest would not be suitable because it does not complement the strengths. The strengths are specially designed aircraft to maximize seats with very low levels of service. Any service provided is charged for. They tend to be out of town, low cost airports. A first class passenger would want high levels of service and the convenience of a city center located airport. So that's why it wouldn't work. However, if we were to buy another low cost airline, well, that would make some sense. Another low cost airline would increase our volume, would increase our economies of scale potential and reduce our cost per unit, which is what low cost production is all about. So I'm trying to instill in your brain the context of what the business is. It's a low cost producer and buy another low cost airline, fantastic. Try to break up what your basis of success is by trying to move into full service first class. No, don't do that. So always have that in mind. Think about how I try to picture and visualize real life there as well. Important. What else? Terminology that students of mine have questioned me on and are not clear about. Well, the point to point and hub and spoke all that means is there has been a trend in uh, Europe in particular and in the US where a major airline like British Airways brings people from Barcelona, from Madrid, from Paris, from Bordeaux to London. And then it consolidates all those London people and it sends them off to Australia or Chicago. And it makes money on the kind of, you know, the big jets. And so they, they don't really sweat that Madrid to London uh, route very much. But what the low cost airlines have done, they have really, really made success out of point to point. So they absolutely have 100% capacity going from Stansted in the UK, for argument's sake, to a specific town, somewhere near a capital city, but by no means in it. 
Yeah. So that is a terminology that I think most people didn't like. I'm not sure if anyone else has a, a terminology question. If you have, pop it in the chat box and I will try and deal with it. For those people who maybe internet isn't very good, there will be a recording of this that I hope will work. It normally does. I can't 100% guarantee, but 99%. Yep. Yeah. We're okay. We're okay. Uh, yeah. Just a few, a few of you are saying cheap is bad quality. Not necessarily is it bad quality. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think Ryanair has one of the highest. What about code sharing agreements? Okay, that would not be something that would take place with a low cost airline. Code share would be where lots of the airlines to maximize their ability to fill their planes have shared routes. So British Airways has arrangements with American Airlines, with Qatar, with Finnair, and they will sell tickets for Finnair, for Qatar, but it might be putting all those passengers on a plane which is a BA coded plane. So a code share will be a sharing of the flight code with a number of airlines. So it, rather than have a Finnair flight going to New York, a Qatar flight going to New York and a British Airways flight going to New York, they will consolidate all of those flights into one plane or one code share. Okay, so that's what happens. Uh, so thank you for that question, Shamaz. Uh, what else uh, do we want to talk about? Uh, well, other things that we maybe want to have a little chat about would be uh, risks. I don't know whether it's significant or not, but in this scenario, there was no mention of a risk committee. Maybe risk responsibility was that of another committee, but it certainly wasn't very clear. I think the main risk is health and safety, as I said. So you cannot, cannot, cannot compromise on that. Uh, I wrote a full mock for all my students, uh, literally spent three days as soon as the case scenario came out and trying to think about hypothetical things. One of them I was talking about was, uh, which has been happening in real life, is some low cost airlines have been having minimum amount of fuel. So it saves the weight of the plane. And as a result, uh, their fuel efficiency is better. But if there's delays at the airport, I could run out of fuel. Uh, is that acceptable? Well, there's been yeah a lot of talk and controversy over that one. Uh, so yeah, I'm just just thinking. I mean, please don't don't go trawling through the low cost airline. Uh, I'm just from what I know. Technology is key. You book your tickets with technology. Uh, their tickets are on your phone. There's no paper. Uh, all of the planning is all done with technology. You self check in your bags with technology. Technology is key. It needs to be protected. Uh, the one threat that might come to them, though, is the unacceptability of uh, flights. Yeah, that uh, might become less acceptable for business people or everyone getting in a jet and contributing to the greenhouse impact. It might be. It might be. Uh, and then economic factors, although I would think full cost airlines are more likely to be exposed to downturns in the economy, the cost of living crisis, as long as the low cost airlines keep their prices competitive. So a few risks to consider. Uh, what else? Well, I did a final mock with my students and uh, they, they'd actually done at least two or three other mocks with me and I get ACCA SBL markers to market. So they, they have a pretty good uh, kind of awareness of what to do on the CBE platform. They have a, a really good awareness of time management. And this was their third or fourth mock. What did I see in their final mock? Well, problems that they had, they still had problems with time management. They were better than maybe their first mock, but they still had problems. They still had problems with layout. They still didn't read the question and didn't look at the professional skills marks. And they didn't focus on the marks, meaning their answer didn't reflect the number of marks that were awarded for that particular task. So that students who have the benefit of doing mocks with me, going through 90 videos with me, debriefing questions with me, uh, WhatsApping me every day about problems they have, and they still have those problems. So I imagine, you know, a lot of students will have those. And what I really want to make sure also they understood 
was the context, as I've explained, that you know it's not going to work to be a first class service airline if it's low cost. So let me talk about each of those issues. Still a challenge for my students. They've got pretty good at it, but it's still a challenge that they weren't 100% brilliant at. Time management, what do we do? Well, the bottom line on time management, I would say to you, is have a budget. And this is not just an SBR exam, this would be any exam, but particularly a problem on SBL because you've got three tasks and you're on your own. Yeah, about a third, a third, a third for each task. You've got to manage your time, you've got to read quite a bit. So what can we do? Well, have a budget. How do we create a budget? Well, if, if, if we think of the exam as three and a quarter hours, 195 minutes, if we spend 30 minutes reading and planning, I hope you've had opportunities to do mocks to time on the CBE platform. You will know whether you can read it in 30 or a little bit more or a little bit less. Uh, that comes with experience. You've got to find out. Uh, that would leave you with about 160 minutes, sorry, 160 minutes for 100 marks. So that leaves us with roughly about 1.6 minutes a mark. Now, some of you will say, ah, what about the professional skills marks? They don't require any time to acquire. That's quite right. Divided by 80 and only multiply. So that would leave you two minutes a mark. And you just, you know, two by 80 gives 160. So whichever way you cut it, I'm encouraging you to have a budget. Okay, that's what we need to have. Really, the exam I see as a project management exercise in mark acquisition. It's a project for you to acquire at least 50 of the marks. To do that, I have, I'll have i share a planning video with you on YouTube. I, I'm, but basically, the point I would make is the first 50% of the marks are the easiest to acquire. Your job is to get the first 50 of all three tasks and you pass the exam. If you think you can get 100% of task one and then you miss a bit of task three out, you're crazy. Yet yeah, that is not the approach or the strategy for the exam. Try to get at least half of all of the tasks. They are the easiest marks to acquire. That is the strategy to pass. So that's my advice on time management. I don't know whether anyone has any questions on time management. I would agree with you, Eskinder, about foreign exchange risk. There were different currencies, so that is a risk as well, I would agree. Happy with the time management argument I've just put forward? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, regulatory changes, but not as much as fuel and, and the other things we mentioned. Okay, great, let's move on then. So that's time management. What about reading and planning? Well, how do we deal with the exhibits, the tasks? Uh, we kind of maybe highlight some stuff. I think the key thing I would encourage you is picture and make it real. What's going on? What's the dynamic of what's being said in the exhibit? How does that affect what's happening? And don't forget about the pre-scene material. Yeah, but uh, yeah, highlighting active reading is good. Presentation. You must understand you have a very short moment with your marker. Your marker is under time pressure because they've got lots of scripts to complete in a short period of time. And therefore, if you can empathize with that situation, you need to help the marker mark your script. And if you present the marker with a script like I'm showing you on the screen now, that's not really very helpful. The marker has to, uh, uh, yeah, okay, boom, boom, boom. Yes, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Alternatively presented like this, dead easy. Yep. You make the decision for the marker to give you a mark. You leave white space. You even give a subheading. That is how good presentation looks like. Presentation tips also would be make the marker's job easy. White space, subheadings, gaps. Good opening statement sets the right psychological tone. So think I meet you for the first time and I say, oh, hello. And you say, mm -hmm. I kind of think, mm, not sure. Whereas if you give me a big smile and say hello back, I like you. Similar psychological games can be played on the exam. Okay, context. Well, this is, a, this is an example of one of the questions I included in my mock that I wrote specially once the pre-scene came out, didn't go to bed for kind of two or three days, wrote the mock. And uh, just to, if, you, if you can't see this, I'll read it to you. It says the current induction program is being updated 
and it's been suggested that it should contain more information explaining operations of core jets so that employees can understand the key operations of the business and why they're important. So typical introductory kind of paragraph. You've been asked to prepare a report for the HR director, uh, the contents of which will be used to update the employee induction program. OK, so we get what the question is. We are required for 16 marks, prepare a report for the HR director, which evaluates the key resources which core jets have contributed to its success over recent years. So what are the key resources within core jets which have contributed to its success? So professional skills are available for demonstrating analysis skills and considering the most significant factors which have enabled core jets to achieve competitive advantage. So what's the question asking? It's not asking about induction at all. Some people got tunnel vision, they say induction, way off they go into induction. The question is asking about what are the key resources which have contributed to the success over the years. So on a question like any question like that, I step back and I think resources, what do I know about resources? If someone said to resources to you, if you've read any of my articles on the ACCA website, what resources do you see? When you see resources, what happens to you? You can come off mic if you want. When you see a question, what, what strengths? Okay, when you see strengths and weaknesses, what do you think? I need more than strengths. I need something to help me come up with some answers to open up it for me. SWAT, well, no, SWAT, strengths and weaknesses are internal. Opportunities and threats are external. Yeah, resources don't, are not opportunities. Resources are what we have within. There are strengths and our weaknesses. A SWAT doesn't give me enough. Interesting, interesting. Okay, let me share with you what I would do, what I've done. I mean, read my articles on the ACCA uh, website, Strategic Planning Process Part 1 by Sean Purcell, Strategic Planning Process Part 2, and you will see, and my latest podcast uh, that you can find on Spotify uh, talks about 6Ms. You've not heard of 6Ms? They're resources, money, manpower, materials, machinery, markets, makeup. Suddenly I've got six things to think about. I can look at each of those resources and then apply them to the core jets airline i'm thinking financial situation what is it like well it gives us some graphs of figures we can talk a little bit about it manpower what are they like machinery machinery they're not a manufacturing well, what's the machinery in an airline it's the aircraft it's the technology to help booking and ground handling boom suddenly i've got loads of things i can say when i have a catalyst like six m's to help me yeah just going back to one of the ants someone said swat it doesn't really help me, but I think SWAT, I think internal strengths and weaknesses, internal six M's, opportunities and threats. I think external, I think Pestel, I think five forces, Whoa, loads of things potentially I can now address the case with. Here it's about resources. It's about six M's. So yeah, read the article if that doesn't come instantly to you. It should to make your life easy. Technology theory or technical theory rather that you read in the books is not going to get any marks in the exam, but what it's going to do, it's going to provide a catalyst to open up things for you, open up things for you. And that's what we need. So my answer, bearing in mind what I've just been talking about on layout, mark focus. So if I was then to take, say, money, I'm going to look at the financial information that's given in the pre-scene. What would an answer look like? My answer, I wouldn't say money, I'd say financial position. These aren't great answers, but they're worth a mark. So I say relatively low gearing. There's not really a lot of financial information there, but they've got, they own 75% of their fleet. Okay, that means they've got low levels of debt. So what? Always try and get a so what. If you've got low levels of debt, you're less reliant on debt or payments to leasing. If you've got low debt, you should be able to raise debt more easily should you need it. The fact that you've got 75% of your aircraft that are owned provides you with a good asset base to guarantee any debt. Easily a mark for that. Growth in revenue. Revenue had gone up every year. Yeah, difficult to say exactly, but those of us who love working out accounts, that skill is irrelevant in the life you're going to move into. A bot will do that, but you need to understand the trend. And the trend was definitely kind of consistently growing. So what does that say? Why? Well, people are confident to fly core jets. Yeah, they're, they're happy with the new routes they've introduced. Otherwise, they wouldn't fly and revenue would go down. 
Growth in profit, again, it's kind of gone up proportionally with the growth in revenue. So yeah, it's got good control of its operations if its profit has gone up with its revenue. If it hadn't done, they would have internal inefficiencies. So just comment on it. The problem we have here, we don't have the full industry picture, so we can't pass truly you know, good points because there's nothing to compare with. But we can just say what we see. So money, that's what I saw. And that's how I lay my answer out. White space, highlighted or bold subheading. If I was thinking maybe about another manpower, so I'm looking at staff, well, we've got competent and well-trained staff. So what? Well, all staff undergo a lot of induction. They have access to online learning resources. Okay, it gives us that in the case. There's no marks for that. The so what, what, so what, so what? Uh, well, as a result, it's likely they're, because of all this training and investment, going to be uh, able to uh, perform their tasks to a high level. Yeah, that's what's going to come out from that. What else? They get a lot of training, but they also get appraisals. So what's that going to do if you get appraised? Well, it's going to make you feel good for saying well done, but it's also going to be able to identify any weaknesses to help you improve. And look at the layout again, white space, point, white space, point. That's what I want you to do. So that I've done my money, I've done my manpower. If I did my machinery in the context of core jets, my machinery is the aircraft fleet. Okay, so what? Well, it's modern. So what? It says that in the case, you get no marks for that. But because it's modern, average age of four and a half years, which is lower than the industry, we have got a comparator now. What does that mean? Well, operating costs per passenger are going to be lower. Yeah, and that, so what? Well, operating costs per passenger lower means that the margin, the profit is going to be better. Yeah, also we are going to tick green boxes because the more modern planes have lower emissions. Yeah, so yeah, people who discriminate in favor of green or greener airlines would fly with core jets. So that is a snippet from a mock I did with my students. That is how I got my answer. It said resources, I think resources do i go through every line in the pre-scene material and every exhibit no i think resources six m's what are six m's money manpower material machinery markets makeup let's have a look then at the money situation let's have a look at the manpower situation let's have a look at the machinery and so on i you know makeup structure could have talked about the board and things like that so by taking that approach which is not, it's open-minded, I can get so many marks. Please try and adopt that strategy. Okay? Any questions on any of those that I've just said there? All good for me. Okay, okay, thank you. Alrighty, let me move on. Uh, so if I was to summarize the SBL exam, I'd like just to remind you that it's not a technical exam, yeah? You can't learn it. People come to me who failed the exam three or four times and I learn all the Kaplan book and all the BPP book, okay? That, you know, it's a bit like failing your driving test and they said, I knew every, every part of the theory. I'd watched 300 videos on how to drive, but had you ever gotten a car and practiced? No, that's why you failed, yeah? So you need to, build experience in SPL. It's not about learning loads of theory. That is not going to get you anywhere. Believe me. Yeah. And you need to understand so that when you understand, you can contextualize any task that is thrown at you. Okay. That is the essence of SPL. It comes with practice. It comes with having confidence to express opinion, which again comes with getting plenty of feedback. All right. How does it differ to other exams? Well, don't listen to me. These are the words of the examining team. It's the rationale. It's about technical knowledge in the context of being a leader in the workplace. It's about showing professionalism. Yeah, which, you know, it's not about you get four professional skills marks for writing report format. But if you were addressing an HR director about a finance issue in loads of financial jargon, you would lose professional skills marks because that's not professional. Yeah, that's what the ACCA are trying to prepare you for. Okay, so 
it's the rationale it's an applied exam if you're stuck think about what would i do in the workplace remember why people fail people fail because of timing layout mark focus and not enough practice yeah i give a guarantee to my students that they'll pass this exam but i withdraw that guarantee that they get everything again for free if they fail to do the mocks because their dog dies or whatever excuse comes up you, you, you know they can't do the mock because you know whatever that's fine but you've just lost your pass assurance because everyone that does the mocks passes the exam if you're serious about passing the exam you'll be doing mocks to time okay so make sure you do some practice you might say well how can i get some feedback try and find someone who is equally motivated like you as a study buddy and do some work with them yeah that would be important uh, so hopefully that makes sense uh, do you have any other uh, questions for me uh, before i maybe yeah you can ask me anything you want actually uh, let me let me put it out to the floor and then we will uh, wrap it up hopefully it's been useful do i have any advice on mark focus I well, some people come to me who you know maybe you've studied elsewhere, and the question's eight marks, and there's four points, and they say, uh, I said, how many marks are you going to get for that? They say, oh, eight, and I'll say, mm, okay, how are you going to get eight? Well, uh, four points, two marks a mark. My tutors told me it's two marks a mark. Um, mm. It's two marks a mark if you give me two points. Your points cannot be a repetition of what's in the case you've got to add value to what's in the case if you want to then take another mark out of it which is normally possible but not always you need to think about so what you need to think about consequence yeah you need to think about the why following the point you've done if it was an eight mark question i'd probably give, give five six points thinking you know worst case scenario i'm going to get one at least i've got five or six out of eight that gets me a good pass that's how I think of Mark Focus. So uh, yeah, thanks for that question, Luke. What's my advice on improving on the professional skills marks? Uh, well, what you must realize, uh, it, it's kind of changed a little bit. I, I mean, I was involved in SBL with the ACCA three years before it came out. I wrote all of the training material for it uh, and professional skills marks have definitely evolved. And you need to not just look at professional skills marks for skepticism or communication. You need to read what it says after that. So it might say professional skills marks are available for, I don't know, communication in ensuring that. Mm -mm -mm. And you must follow all of that. And then you use the professional skill as the lens which you craft your answer and plan your answer. So thank you for that one. Uh, Shamaz, how do you see Bull Bridge Protect? Excellent model relevant to the airline industry like Cortex. Well, first of all, it's not a technical exam. So if you're gonna spend a lot of time learning technical models that's nice but you know why not just watch Netflix or something it's going to be as useful uh, so please don't waste time understand what the Baldrige model is it's a bit obscure it's weird that it's on the SPL syllabus if I'm very honest but it is and all it is is whenever there has been a question on it it's being given in the exhibits you have not been required to remember it and it's purely a method of evaluating performance excellence so it might come up but if anything like that did come up uh, there is no marks for technical uh, regurgitation of fact it's using your technical knowledge to open up ideas yeah so please don't don't go down the technical route anything else so thank you for that shamas check i haven't missed anything earlier Okay, okay. Alrighty. Um, well, hopefully what I've said has been of some use to you. A final thing I want to say to you is implementing these ideas. Okay, um, so maybe look at this again and look at a recording think, are you doing it? I think for the next week, the exam would have been yesterday or next Tuesday, but you need to know what is happening every waking and sleeping hour. So you have a time to you have an alarm when to go to bed, never mind when to get up. Yeah, you need to look after yourself. OK, really important. You need to break study into manageable chunks. Otherwise, it just becomes boring and you will be ineffective. Yeah, you need to look after that muscle, which is your brain by, you know, just like if you were training for a marathon, you'd get a massage, you know, 
do a little bit of mindfulness or something like that. Your brain needs to be in tip top condition. This can have a major impact on your performance on the day. Okay. If you wear out your brain, it's not going to be able to work. Would you run a marathon the night before a marathon? Of course you wouldn't. And as I've said already, you can't learn SBL. So think about that. And also think about what you're putting inside of you. If you're stressed, uh, that's natural. Everyone is going to be stressed in an exam. You need to have a strategy to deal with stress. Okay. You also need to be thinking about uh, the food you eat. If you're eating a lot of simple, uncomplex white flour carbohydrates, that just gets dumped in your system as glycogen <sighs> and makes you sleepy. Not very good brain food. Yep. Um, although people used to think that uh, Usain Bolt just ate Kentucky Fried Chicken, he was having a laugh. He was the world's greatest athlete, finely tuned through a finely tuned nutritional program. You should think about similar to make the difference in your exam. Okay, so really think about those things. They're going to make a huge difference to you. Uh, the other thing I think that's really important is you need to think about why you're doing this. You need to have had a conversation with yourself about what qualifying as an accountant is going to bring and not forget about that. Yeah, because it's within touching distance. Yeah, you just need to make a difference in the next week. Yeah, you need to follow what I've said and then you can fulfill what hopefully you have visualized. Uh, if you go on, put my name into ACCA Student Accountant Magazine. I've written lots of articles on motivation and all that kind of stuff. Have a look at it. Make sure you follow the advice. OK, but look after yourself, I think is number one. Please keep away from all these idiots who are online, who the ACCA uh, do, just just put their name into the ACCA website and see if lots of articles come up written by them. I guarantee they won't. Some of these tuition providers, they, they're not even approved, never mind platinum approved. So just focus on what's important and that's you passing the exam. If you want resources, go on to the ACCA website. That is where the best resources for you lie. Okay, I hope it's been useful. Believe in yourself. Don't give up. Do not let any question or task go without attempting any marks. Think, what can I say? What can I say? Because if you miss out a whole question, that's going to have a huge impact on your grade point average. You try to get at least 30, 40 percent. That's going to help you. I wish you all the very best. Keep calm. You'll be fine. Think about what you would do in the workplace if you're really stuck. There's a recording, as I say, for those of us who have joined late and uh, yeah, follow me on WhatsApp. I might share some other stuff there. OK, I also have a YouTube channel and I do podcasts that help ACCA students. It's all free. OK, so have a look. OK, all the very best. No problem. Thank you very much.